when we first get news of a crane accident, especially if it's coming from a general contractor or say a prime subcontractor, we'll often hear it wasn't my crane or I didn't hire them directly. And we understand that from how the flow of responsibility typically takes place in a construction project. You know, but however, people often think that they're insulated from that crane accident. And what we'll talk about today is seldom does it actually work out that way every time. Uh, in my years of looking at those contracts that Hank just mentioned, the vast majority always favor the crane owner and operator. And in fact, we see crane incidents where the crane is defective, there's clear operator error. I think we'll talk about one of those scenarios later on. In the majority of those cases, that contract does indeed favor the crane company and we end up paying a share of that claim. So I think this audience knows that cranes are a rare and precious need for the industry. So those crane companies hold all the bargaining power for us. My advice to this audience is to start with the assumption that risk transfer ends with the party that hires the crane and the operator. I think if you start with just general premise, it'll help create the mindset at your company on how to best manage your crane related operations going forward.